My name is Mike Goodman. I'm the Executive Director of Economic Development and Community Partnerships and a Professor of Public Policy here at UMass Dartmouth. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our campus for this incredible celebration of 50 years of CERTA. Um, I'd like to bring the greetings of our Chancellor, Mark Fuller, who's unable to join us today, but who would like to welcome you and all of our distinguished guests who will be acknowledged shortly. I just want to say, as a representative of our university, how valuable it has been to be working closely with our friends from CERTA over the last 50 years, and how incredible the changes that have taken place in recent years have been for our community here at your public research university. Over the last three years, I'm told that we've had 200,000 trips involving our students, our faculty, and staff to and from our campus, thanks to the wonderful service that CERTA provides. That kind of connection is vital for our students and our staff, many of whom are unable to afford a car or who would like to try to exist in the region without one. Uh, the free fairs that our wonderful legislative advocates and leaders, uh, the, 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 the gubernatorial administration, Governor Healy, uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and of course, Secretary Tibbet Nutz, that support has been uh, an incredible uh, asset to our students, many of whom are working hard to make ends meet and, 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 and taking jobs and doing valuable service to our community and to our region even as they study here to uh, move their careers forward and change those contributions over time from a more entry level to a more professional basis. It's been an incredible partnership over the years and we are very proud to be able to host this auspicious occasion and this wonderful event. Um, I'm going to step aside and allow Eric Russo to step up um, and I want to congratulate you Eric on 50 years of wonderful service and your wonderful leadership. Uh, we value this partnership and we're proud to host this wonderful event. Thank you very much. Thank you for carving out time in your day to help us celebrate our 50th anniversary for the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority. SRTA's first administrator, Benjamin Baker, passed earlier this year, but his vision lives on in the cross-pollination of regional public transportation that supports the community's economic development. I never had the opportunity to meet Ben Baker or our longest tenured administrator, Lou Patine. Imagine if I did, we would sit at, at, for hours at Antonio, swapping tales of early days Recap, recapping all the narrow misses and unexpected triumphs. The story of regional transit authorities are long and varied across the Commonwealth, but can be uh, distilled down to one objective, serve people. Having access to the world through public transportation opens endless opportunities for the community. I thank each and every one of you uh, for being here today and doing your part to help improve the shape of the service for everyone in our communities. We're very fortunate to have a wonderful collection of leaders joining us today and I, who have been instrumental in the continued success of SRTA. I believe our first speaker's time with the authority overlaps to the day with end minute with my own. I attended my first SRTA advisory board meeting November 29th, 2011 with then mayor-elect John Mitchell. It did not take long to realize that there was much work to do. Under his leadership in the early days, we took on a number of tough issues that laid the groundwork to incrementally build ridership from 1.7 million trips annually to 2.9 million trips in 2019. His trust in the authority provided the room for it to grow into one of the leading authorities in the Commonwealth, all while ensuring the service moved in a direction that was fair and equitable for all passengers. I am forever grateful for his mentorship in those challenging times when I needed it most. Please welcome longtime chair of the SRT Advisory Board, New, New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell. Well, thank you, Eric. It's, that uh, brings back some memories, one of which is that uh, you weren't wearing your signature bow ties back then. That's, uh, that's a new and welcome development. Um, Anyway, I, I will, uh, I, I, I'll be brief this morning. I know we have a number of speakers, but I, I, I did want to just really highlight the, um, the importance of this uh, occasion and uh, offer some words of thanks. So let me start with the thanks. I, I, I want to thank uh, a, a number of folks, uh, in particular uh, the Healy administration and um, Secretary uh, Tibbetts Nutt, who's here today, whom, from whom you'll hear in a moment. Uh, for their support of the regional transit agencies, including SRTA. And by the way, I think there'll be some 
uh, mispronunciations today. Uh, we did rebrand SR as SRTA, and uh, and we've all had to sort of internalize uh, that over the years. But it was an appropriate rebranding. So, uh, but it has been a, a run of success, and in no small part because of the support of uh, the Healy administration as well as our state legislative delegation. You'll hear from members of the delegation today, but uh, but they have supported things like uh, free fairs and Sunday service, which was long sought after, uh, as many of you uh, know. So I really want to thank them for all of their help, and you'll hear uh, a word or two from them in a moment. Uh, I do want to thank, um, uh, I, I want to thank also a lot of the, there's a lot of federal funds that are passed through the, the Biden administration, uh, represented here today by Peter. You'll hear from him in a second, but uh, it is there are multiple funding streams in play for operations and plant and, and equipment that make it all go. Um, I do want to offer a, a special thanks to Eric and Kristen and the entire uh, SRTA team, many of whom are here today. Um, you guys have made this happen. Uh, it, it, it is the, the organization was not in good shape, to say the least, uh, some uh, 12, 12, 13 years or so ago. And um, there were a lot of folks who wondered whether it was viable. Um, we had some discussions about uh, merging it with, with others in, in the region or in the larger region in eastern Massachusetts. Uh, that, to, to my mind, didn't make sense, uh, neither then nor. Uh, certainly, obviously not now, now that it's on its feet, but there were serious discussions about the, uh, around the viability of uh, this going concern that we know as SRTA, and uh, Eric is, and his team really took over. And Eric was, I don't know, you were like like 17 years old at the time. <laughs> and I was like, is this guy up to the job? And it's, remark it's been a remarkable tenure and you're going on like half of your adult life, or most of your adult life in this position, which is, um, and, he, and he's, he's still not even 30 yet. So <laughs> it's, it's, it has been, it's been, but in all seriousness, I, I, it's, um, it's been a, a master class in, uh, in, in effective public management. Uh, it's a service that so many people rely on. It, it, we tend to take for granted. I will, and I will own up that I, I sometimes take uh, public or public uh, uh, transit for granted in the sense that it's not part of my ordinary, part of my everyday routine. Uh, for those who don't take a bus or a subway or uh, or a commuter rail uh, rail of any kind, you, you forget how important it is for that service to be reliable. To, that it shows up on the time you need it to show up matters an awful lot. And for that bus to be there at that appointed time in that place requires really good management, it requires a whole lot of dedicated employees, it requires uh, sufficient funding, it requires a lot of stuff to go right. And But for that person who gets on that bus, that matters. It matters to their families, it matters to, um, to, their, uh, to their livelihood, and it matters to their ability to pursue the American dream, all of that. And so uh, I want to thank you guys for making everything go right so that, could hap that can happen uh, as we expect it to. And I know Mayor Coogan, uh, my colleague, is, feels the same way that in the Fall River area we've seen such, uh, likewise seen an, an enormous improvement uh, over the years. And we're marking 50 years now, and it's a great, it, it is, uh, it's a really, it's a testament, and especially in the last 10 years, to, to that effective leadership. So thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you in particular, Eric, and uh, here's to the next 50 years, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, and you know I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank my team, uh, specifically Maritza Aquino, Michelle Tavares, uh, Brendan Marin, Corey Hebert, Shane Trimble, who could not be here, John LeBert, and the backbone of the authority, Kristen Sneezik. Um, you know it's it's been a wonderful partnership. You know we often have very separate and different ideas on how we should do things but it always comes together to the best outcome for the authority and it really is a team effort and everybody does their part to make it better for everyone uh, next up the, i'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, our next speaker because i learned that you can tell a lot about character by observing how they interact with people In my 13 years only one secretary of transportation has purposely reached out to srta requesting an opportunity 
to visit so they could see firsthand the challenges and the successes. Showing up matters, especially to bus operators and maintenance technicians who were treated by that secretary with appreciation and admiration for the incredibly challenging work they do to keep the South Coast moving. I know I learned during that visit just how lucky we are to have an administration and secretary who understands the importance of RTAs and supports building up public transportation in all corners of the Commonwealth. Please welcome our next speaker, Massachusetts Secretary of Transportation, Monica Tibbetts Nutt. Morning, everyone. You're gonna have to buckle up. We normally don't have this many people show up to an event. So this list is a little bit long and all the people I need to thank. First, I just wanna start with UMass for hosting us here today. This is an absolutely gorgeous campus and this is a wonderful space to be able to celebrate this. I wanna thank New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell. I really wanna thank FTA Region 1 Administrator Pete Butler for constantly taking my phone calls, my requests, Basically, you're just really lovely, so thank you. <laughs> um, Congressman Michael Jackman, Senator Michael Rodericks, Representative Bill Strauss, Fall River Mayor Paul Coogan, Representative Chris Markey, Representative, oh, no, I'm gonna leave that part for last, Representative Fiola, and I just need to make sure everyone knows that Representative Schmidt was here, was very excited about being here, wanted to send a hello, but unfortunately had to run. So, but I told him I would absolutely tell everyone that he was here. And then I also want to thank Eric Russo and his team. Buses are really important to me. I've spent an entire career talking about buses, loving buses. So, you know, when I had the honor to be in this position, I wanted to be able to go out and see all the buses, and especially to talk to the operators. It is a very thankless job. Being a bus operator is probably one of the hardest jobs you can possibly ever imagine. And people would be really surprised how much a thank you really matters, whether you're getting off the bus, whether you're getting on the bus, and especially when you have a chance to go out and meet all the people that run these services, it's a real honor. So I really encourage you, if you haven't had an opportunity, to please go visit them. The SRTA cares deeply about their employees and being able to celebrate 50 years here is a really exciting day. We have 15 RTAs and they all serve very different regions. This region in particular, it is so important because they're really cut off. And when I talk about the RTAs, when I say they are cut off, these are people that don't have any other option but to drive. And if you can't afford a car, that dictates your entire life. It really does. It dictates where you can grocery shop, where you can work, where you can send your kids to school. It dictates everything. And so being able to have an RTA like the SRTA makes a community even better than it would have been otherwise. And people really count on this. And I think anyone that's ever talked to anyone that uses this service, they just rave about all the places that they can go. And especially now that the service has been extended in hours, that has really changed the fabric of the communities that it operates in. Getting to 50 years is not easy. I think we spent a long time talking about the TN, how old it is, but 50 years for an RTA is significant. And being able to say that over those years, you've just continued to get better and better and better every year, you don't see that all the time. You really don't. And I think Eric has done an amazing job in not just kind of resting on those laurels, but continuing to push. He is constantly working with Tom Schiavone from our rail and transit team, who if you haven't had a chance to meet him, he is unbelievable, but constantly wanting to innovate, constantly applying for grants. When I heard that they applied to go fare free, the level of excitement, I, I don't even think it could be measured, honestly. Going fare free in an area where you have so many families that desperately need that, once again, it goes back to changing people's lives and also just sets an unbelievable example for Massachusetts and an unbelievable example for the 14 other RTAs. This is a beautiful area. I love coming down here. It does take a while to get here. But when you do get here, it is absolutely beautiful. The people here are amazing. You also have some of the best local officials that you will ever meet and the best state officials that you will ever meet who reach out, work with Eric, and push the bounds of what an RTA can do. 
So I just wanted to have a chance to just say congratulations for 50 years. Congratulations on having Eric in this position. I would love to steal him, but I won't do that. <laughs> and just thank you for showing up. And thank you for showing up on a Friday. Looking around this room, this really is a testament to what makes this region amazing and what makes this RTA one of the best in Massachusetts and I would argue one of the best in the United States. So thank you for letting me share this with you all today. Thank you for letting me come up here and just thank a bunch of people. And thank you for letting me be a part of this and letting my team be a part of this growth and just being able to also dream about what the future is gonna look like for this region. So thank you, and I will hand it back to Eric. In his previous role as Deputy Administrator and his current role as FTA Region 1 Administrator, Peter Butler has always been a supportive partner who takes the time to make the right connection to get each grantee the help they need. For SRTA, that meant making a connection with another like-sized grantee in the region who submitted a successful discretionary grant application. That connection gave the authority the perfect starting point to submit our own applications. Since then, we've been successful with two discretionary grant awards funded through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which will bring a total of 34 hybrid 35-foot transit coaches to the South Coast by the end of this fiscal year. Please welcome FTA Region 1 Administrator Peter Butler. Good morning. On behalf of Secretary Buttigieg and Acting FTA Administrator Vanderpool, I am so very excited to be with you all to celebrate 50 years of SRTA's service, dedication, and commitment to its communities and the Commonwealth. This anniversary is not just a celebration of achievements, but also an acknowledgement of the incredible people behind the scenes. I'd like to give a very, very special thank you to Eric Russo and the amazing team at SRTA who safely transport thousands of passengers throughout southeastern Massachusetts each and every day. In partnership with our friends from MassDOT, along with local and state elected leadership, SRTA has made great strides to expand service, improve accessibility, and lead the way to a cleaner and greener future. As Eric had mentioned just most recently, and as a result of your federal delegation support of the bipartisan infrastructure law, CERTA has successfully secured nearly $24 million in competitive federal funding and is well positioned to continue moving forward, upgrading its fleet and facilities. <laughs> Finally, FTA appreciates just this opportunity to mark this significant milestone, and we look forward to the next 50 years of service and growth and improvement to co the Commonwealth's communities through public transportation. Thank you all so very much. Uh, before I, I start talking about our, our next speaker, I just need to highlight uh, something that uh, Peter touched on. We are moving uh, 12 to 13,000 passengers a day on average. And we have Presidents Eric Carvalho and Tony Sousa from uh, ATU Locals 174, Fall River, and 1037 New Bedford here 
they do a fantastic job representing their people and ensuring that everybody is operating safely and getting everywhere uh, as close to one time as we possibly can. So we, we thank them for all of their help. One of the first times I heard our next speaker describe the process of building the Commonwealth's budget, I started to experience an overwhelming sense of despair. It hit me that the combined funding for 15 RTAs was less than 0.2% of the Commonwealth's budget. So how could I expect much more than 0.2% of someone's time when they are responsible for building that budget? And then I snapped out of it and rem remembered that Senator Rodericks has always been generous with his time for SRTA, believes in our mission, and fights to support RTAs. In his current role, he's been a champion working to bring Sunday service to the South Coast for the first time in a generation. <coughs> Please welcome Senator Michael Rodericks, Chairperson of Senate Ways and Means. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation to be here, to my, my colleagues in the legislature, to Secretary Tibbet Nutz, to Mayor Coogan and Mayor Mitchell, and to all the officials. Thank you all for being here. Um, you know, to celebrate 50 years of SRTA providing service to, to our region of the Commonwealth. Now, as much as I admire and value a real robust public transportation system, I'm not a transportation guy. That's Chair Strauss, who's <coughs> the champ transportation guy. And, for, and I want to take this opportunity to uh, ask all of you to give Chair Strauss a round of applause for his 30 plus years of tremendous, <laughs> tremendous public service to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. As Eric said, you know, I'm, I'm the money guy. So as we are celebrating, rightly so, things like f fare free service, expanded Sunday service, a new fleet of buses, all of that comes as a result of my colleagues and I in the legislature stepping up uh, with new investments in our regional transit authorities. Everything is not the MBTA in Massachusetts, right? And we hear a lot of talk, and I see a lot of head shaking all, every day about how much we need to invest in the MBTA. And we do, and we will. But we also cannot forget the 15 regional transit authorities around the Commonwealth that provide service to these areas, uh, to those areas. For years, in the operating budget, the state support was about $94 million for all of our RTAs. I'm happy to say that this year, in this year's budget, we did, through general operating funds, appropriate $94 million, but we supplemented that with $110 million from the so-called fair share amendment for a total of $204 million of state support for our RTAs <laughs> statewide. And through the effective and efficient leadership and management from folks like Eric and Mary Ellen, you know, we are very, very confident that our RTAs are just moving into the 21st century, really uh, on a good foot, and we will maintain our investment and our commitments to our RTAs. Thank you all for being here, and hold on. Here you go, Bill. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it would not be a celebration with the legislator without a citation, correct? And uh, it gives me great honor. Eric, if I could ask you to, to accept this on behalf of SRTA. Uh, it's an official state citation. Um, uh, offered by myself and Senator Mark Montigny uh, to the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority, SRTA, in recognition of the celebration of your 50th anniversary. It's signed by the Honorable Karen E. Spilka, President of the Senate, and is offered, like I said, by myself and Senator Montigny. Eric, thank you very much for all you do every day. Earlier I mentioned incrementally building ridership. That doesn't come without resources to invest wisely along the way. Whether fighting for increases in state contract assistance, sprinkling forward funding, and my favorite maneuver from our next speaker was carving out surplus ice and snow budget for RTAs, which was integral in keeping the night service that started a decade ago. Representative Strauss has used his keen intellect to stay one step ahead to ensure RTAs were supported in challenging times. That steady growth positioned SRTA to benefit far more when it came time to allocate the investment from the Education and Transportation Fund. We will surely miss having a terrific transportation leader in our region, 
But truth be told, I'm pretty excited to see what comes next. Please join me in welcoming Representative William Strauss, Chairperson, Joint Committee on Transportation. Thank you, Eric. It's um, you know, few few different things uh, swirling around my head right now, um, and uh, I, I kind of wish I had prepared remarks, but I, I never do. So, with that risk, uh, let me be brief, but hopefully thoughtful uh, about a couple of the issues and, and why it's important that I think everyone is here today uh, to mark this milestone for. I, I still want to say Serta. I, I, I can't get past it. It's okay. All right. All right. Um, I, I want to join in uh, Eric's acknowledgement for uh, the two ATU locals that are represented here, uh, the guys I've worked with long before I was uh, chair of the Transportation Committee, and a recognition that uh, the, equip the equipment is critical, obviously, uh, but uh, RTAs and this one uh, don't function without the dedicated employees uh, who show up and, and provide uh, the movement of the vehicles, the care of the vehicles as they um, provide that service to the public. So uh, recognition to them. Uh, I think uh, it's been alluded to uh, about why RTAs are important. And let me just give you my take and why it's always been important to me uh, that uh, the RTAs, uh, and technically the MBTA is a regional transit authority, but it stands in a different position, obviously, uh, than the ones like ours uh, that we refer to. Uh, there have been secretaries and administrations in the past that uh, did not, sadly, appreciate, I think, the role that RTAs play. That's not true today. Uh, with Secretary Tibbetts Nutt and the Healy Driscoll administration, we have an appreciation that I, I frankly have not seen before um, in a bipartisan way uh, uh, with regard to the RTAs. And here's one of the reasons. The beauty of the RTAs and the reason you've got uh, two important mayors here today is that uh, although funding comes from the state and the federal government, uh, the genius of the structure of the RTAs for 50 years here, a little less for a couple of the others, is that it's local control. That is the municipalities, in our case chiefly New Bedford and Fall River, uh, the local leadership determines things. So when we talk about the importance of either extended service, uh, in terms of hours, Sunday service, uh, how the fare structure is set up. These are decisions that the regional R the RTAs themselves, through their governance structure, get to decide. And that's the important thing. What the people here who are locally elected know about the needs of uh, these communities may be reflected in different outcomes in other parts of the state. As I say, we had in the past different administrations, different secretaries, I'm too polite to name them now, but with some prodding later, who knows, um, uh, that if it wasn't controlled uh, at the mass dot offices in downtown Boston, it just wasn't working. Well, uh, I'm happy to have been among those in the legislature, including Senator Rodericks, of course, who said no. It's the way the organizations are set up where local people, local elected officials, the public as well, get to identify the transportation priorities uh, in terms of these public transit um, uh, organizations like SRTA. Uh, and so let's not lose sight of that, and I'm happy that as I leave office, uh, I know that the way in which this administration, the Healy Driscoll administration, views the uh, RTAs is, is forward thinking and I only expect success in the future. Let me just say with regard to the RTAs and SRTA, they don't exist in a vacuum. They're part of the transportation system. That means other modes come into play and we're going to see that in a big way 
during 2025 when uh, uh, commuter rail service, which I prefer to call passenger rail, uh, comes into play for New Bedford and Fall River and Taunton. Uh, and one of the things for those who've been following it is we tend to think of commuter rail as a model that delivers people from south, in our case, from south to north each morning and then brings them home uh, at the end of the day. With the way in which this administration has been able to uh, complete the construction and uh, uh, work on schedules, people will be going in both directions. That means we have the ability, and it can get better, uh, with some capital improvements uh, along the line, the train line itself, uh, to realize the fact that uh, people will come to this area on the new trains. And the RTAs, in our case SRTA, uh, GATRA as well, will be able to take advantage of that and identify, and Eric is fabulous in this, in being open to new ideas, and be able to identify ways in which that transportation system as a whole is enhanced by the fact that people will also come to our area each day. Uh, and uh, connect them into the public transit system, which is the uh, SRTA itself. So I expect really big things coming, big changes, and I'm comforted by the fact that those kind of changes with regard to how SRTA interacts with uh, the people who will be riding the train in both directions will be managed by the local elected officials, chiefly the two mayors who you see up here today, and the other uh, municipal officials who also serve on the SRTA board. So I'm very optimistic about the future for this organization. I'll close by uh, providing uh, a citation as well. Uh, I did notice, and we have this friendly rivalry, always friendly, uh, with the Senate, that Senator Rodericks, see, he's going to pretend not to listen. <laughs> Uh, Senator Rogers referred to his citation as a state citation. I don't mean to diminish it. It's a Senate citation. I have a House citation. I know which one I would put up on the wall, but that's just me. <laughs> now he's paying attention. <laughs> I won't pay a price for this. I'm beyond that now. <laughs> He's laughing, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Okay, moving on. I've got this citation. It's a House citation. And I also want to acknowledge uh, it comes uh, uh, as, as offered not just by myself, because I'm up here at the microphone, but I've got uh, important colleagues here, uh, Carol Fiola, Steve Howitt, Chris Markey's usual spot at the back of the room, uh, and, I, and I didn't see Paul earlier, but uh, he's part of this as well. So I too have a uh, citation. It's from the House of, Represent House of Representatives, closer to the people, of course, uh, and it provides recognition to SRTA for its first 50 years of service to the people in the South Coast region. So I'll present that uh, to Eric now. Great. So, I promise in closing in about 15 seconds, uh, it's really been an honor to have the ability to be helpful at critical times. No member of the legislature does anything all by themselves, although some are prone to say it at times. Uh, we're just lucky if we, at different times, have the ability to help at a critical time in making something good happen. And I've had that, fortunately, in my case. So thank you again. It's been a pleasure to be part of this uh, event today. Just a quick, quick story, if you don't mind. Um, so Mayor Mitchell did mention that uh, uh, there was an effort to rebrand SRTA. And I have to tell you, it came by innocently and organically at the same time. I had the opportunity to work in another, a number of different RTAs uh, across the Commonwealth, and when I was at PVTA, BRTA, FRTA, WRTA, that's just how it was. Uh, so when I came here and I interviewed and I even started the job, I wasn't aware that most people, uh, or everybody at that time, called it CERTA. Uh, so I did feel that it was an opportunity to 
demonstrate a change that we were trying to uh, shake things up on how we were working. And Mayor Mitchell was amongst the first to adopt that and, and really support us. So thank you very much for that. Um, I do also have to admit that uh, in all the excitement this morning, I, I may have miscounted the chairs. Uh, and so we do have another speaker who's not actually on stage. Um, so uh, just let me tell you, when I first sent out the invitations, I was overwhelmed by the tidal wave of yes responses that I got. Uh, and when I saw that Congressman Keating had said yes, I couldn't wait to thank him in person for his letters of support for the 34 hybrid buses and for coordinating to have Senators Warren and Markey sign on as well. Unfortunately, I didn't look far enough down the calendar to realize that this might be a busy time of year for him. Uh, luckily for us, Michael Jackman, District Director uh, with Congressman Keating, is gracious enough to join us and share a few words. Thanks, Eric. That's quite a build-up or a letdown. I'm not sure which one. Uh, it's great to be here today uh, on behalf of the Congressman. Unfortunately, his schedule had a late change, so he couldn't be here this morning. Um, it's great to be surrounded by so many uh, great uh, public officials here. Great to see the Regional Administrator again. We uh, last saw each other on a very hot day down in Cape Cod when they had a similar announcement. Um, but. Uh, I will say, having worked for the Congressman for 14 years, I think I've seen more folks from FTA in the last two or three years than I did the uh, previous 10 or 12 years, and I think that speaks to the uh, seriousness with which, with, with which the uh, Biden-Harris administration takes the importance of transit. So thank you uh, for being here. Thank you, Secretary Tibbetts Nutt, as well, for all the work that you're doing. And uh, there are a lot of great officials here that our office works with, but I know if Bill were here, he'd want to echo Senator Roderick's uh, gesture of uh, giving another uh, round of applause to uh, Bill Strauss for uh, all his work. <laughs> and now uh, we have, not, not, it's not a citation and it's not from the state, it's federal. <laughs> so I don't know, that's better. And it's actually a congressional record. I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it refers to a lot of the uh, history that has already been mentioned, uh, including the, the hard work that, you know, the great work that the RTA does, but also uh, the hard work of the uh, ETU uh, workers who are uh, such an important part of the system. Um, I will read a note that the Congressman has written to Eric, which is a lot shorter. I would like to congratulate you and all at the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority, SRTA, on the organization's 50th anniversary, over the last five decades, SRTA has provided reliable and affordable transportation services to so many residents throughout the South Coast and has established itself as a pillar of the community. I know, I know I speak for many when I say that we are lucky to have SRTA's dedication to supporting access to transportation in our community. To honor this milestone, please find and close, which I'm going to hand to you, Eric, <laughs> a statement that I have submitted into the Congressional Record of the United States House of Representatives. Again, congratulations, and I wish the SRTA many more years of success with warm, warm regards from Congressman Bill Keating. So the Congressional Record is a statement that's read into the permanent record of Congress of the United States House of Representatives. So as long as we have a Congress, you know, knock on wood, right, it'll last a few more years. Uh, this will be part of the permanent record. So, Eric, congratulations and thank you for having me today. Thank you, thank you. You're the closer. <laughs> when I first met our next speaker, he was working with the Fall River Schools. He was very concerned about the authority bringing the Charlie card to the South Coast and what it would mean for Durfee High School. Let me tell you, when you have a customer buying a few hundred thousand dollars worth of passes each year, you take note. As a result, we made sure to include 10 trip student passes to fit with what worked best for the school. Since 2020, Mayor Coogan has worked hard for Fall River. His steady hand has been calming, uh, guiding force in the city. SRT has had the benefit of working alongside the city on several projects which has given me the opportunity to observe how Mayor Coogan listens. He has talented people in place and listens to all points of view to work towards the result that benefits the people of Fall River. I try hard to emulate that trait whenever possible, and I thank you for your leadership. 
please welcome co-chair of the SRT Advisory Board, Fall River Mayor Paul Coogan. I have no idea who he's talking about <laughs> because it doesn't work that way for me. I was just joking with the senator. I said, you know, I brought a citation from the city, but with all these other ones, we kept leaking down the list and I'm saying, holy mackerel, I hope they acknowledge this when we're done. But I did meet Eric because in Fall River, first of all, I want to thank everyone for being here. I forgot that and uh, uh, it's great to be here with all of you, but in Fall River, between their rapid response, helping our disabled people get to a doctor's appointments, shopping, it's five stars. And every day, they transport hundreds and hundreds of students from all over the city to Durfee High School. And that is a challenge in and of itself. When you're dealing with teenagers, at the beginning of the day, they're a little slow. At the end of the day, they're all amped up because they're leaving school. God bless them, and good luck to Eric. Um, but they are a hands-on organization they bring exactly what we need to the uh, city of Fall River, and their partnerships with the federal, state, has welded into something that's gonna be very special going forward. We know they'll be working with us on our bus routes, on our train routes, and anything we can do to make Fall River better. So I do also have a citation. Um, I wanna thank Eric personally for all of his service and all of his team in honor and recognition of his 50th anniversary serving the 10 great communities in the South Coast. Congratulations, Eric. Thank you. And that's it for me, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much again for everybody joining us today. That does conclude our program. Uh, if you'd like to uh, take some pictures by the buses, uh, please do. Uh, they are really quite beautiful. Thank you all for coming.